Let's do a speed round. Let's just keep flying questions up on screen one after the other without waiting and just do a speed round of answers. What are we calling this crypto version of a dot com boom? We need a name. Cryptomania 2020. 2021. Cryptomania. It started in 2020. Cryptomania 2021. The post pandemic boom. Boomdemic. Next question. Should we try to attack Bitcoin as we pretty much know that it can only reinforce it? Absolutely, you should. Attack Bitcoin by all means. Keep attacking it. Everybody else is. Why would you not want to participate in this fun party? If you have the security skills, attack Bitcoin. Now, if you do find something, then I would suggest you use responsible disclosure, which means contacting the software developers who are managing various client implementations and discreetly and provably demonstrate what you found so that they can fix it and then announce the fix and then announce the vulnerability after everybody has patched it. Yes, please do attack Bitcoin. Bitcoin or Bitcoins? asks Matt G, what is the plural form of currency? Well, it depends. I prefer Bitcoin without an S. Uh, I'd like to say I have three Bitcoin, I have 5.2 Bitcoin, I have 57 Bitcoin. And part of the reason for that is because because Bitcoin is divisible into such small units, it feels like an uncountable quantity. And uncountable quantities are best expressed without a plural form right? Uh, so money in general in that form, an uncountable form. Uh, so if you say I have 5.22321213 bitcoins, it sounds weird. I prefer it to be bitcoin. But bitcoins is also correct. And we see that in other currencies too. People will say I have three euro and they also say I have four euros. And that's also perfectly acceptable. I do not have. 57 or 5.12 Bitcoin, uh, just in case that was, this is an example, people. Okay, back to the next question. Are you concerned at all about the idea of fractional Bitcoining? What does Anonymous mean by this? They mean the idea that people are buying Bitcoin, but that Bitcoin doesn't actually exist because they're using it on a custodial platform and they're being given Bitcoin that is being sold to multiple people. A bit like fractional reserve banking. I'm not worried about fractional Bitcoining, primarily because I encourage people to withdraw from custodial services to wallets they control, at which point you get the actual Bitcoin. And if you have Bitcoin on a custodial service that you cannot withdraw or do not withdraw, then not your keys, not your coins is the rule that applies. So also, if you create fractional Bitcoin, you run an enormous risk as the provider because if you do allow withdrawals or if the price gets away from you, you can end up in very, very serious trouble. So uh, fractional Bitcoin, which has happened, we've seen a lot of exchanges get basically through embezzlement or theft, not actually have the Bitcoin that the customers need and then go bankrupt. That's what happened with empty locks. That's what happened with Quadriga. That's what happened with a bunch of exchanges in the past. So that's basically a buyer beware, caveat emptor. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you'd like to support me in my mission of educating people about Bitcoin and open blockchains all around the world and publishing free content under Creative Commons licenses, please consider subscribing to the channel, sharing this video, as well as supporting me on patreon.com slash A-A-N-T-O-N-O-P. Thank you.